Hey, welcome back. This is part two of our study in Genesis chapter 25, 1 through 11. Today we're looking at 1 through 4, and this study is called The Promise Gets Closer. First, let's talk about another wife. Okay, as we begin the text, we see that Abraham took on another wife after Sarah, and her name was Keturah. There are many speculations and stories that have been created around Keturah. You can look at those online. Since not much is told, people like to try to fill in, you know, and try to figure out the details that aren't really in Scripture. There's not really much to be said about her. Since the mention of Keturah comes at the end of Abraham's life, we can probably safely assume that he did not take her to be his wife until after Sarah has died. It's probably why Moses put it in the place that it is. In verse 6, it mentions the, the concubines of Abraham, which many assume to be a reference to Hagar and Keturah. That's what I assume. They were both the concubines of Abraham and were given the status of, uh, well, they were never given the status of Sarah as a full wife. She was a full wife. You kind of have to know the whole idea of concubinage and, um, you know, even when you get in further along, you get into like the Roman period and the Greek periods, um, then you get another level of, of wife. You know, there's like three levels of wifedom, basically. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's not like the, the idea that we have today, which is pretty just, well, I don't know. I was going to say it's pretty straightforward, but I guess it's not really, is it? Uh, you know. Uh, marriage has unfortunately been changed and corrupted in every culture, so I guess we're not really that much different. So, never mind. Uh, yeah, you know, but if you study back then, you understand that there's concubines, which are a wife, but not a full fledged wife. There's a wife wife, and then there's a concubine wife. So, the idea here is that probably Keturah and Hagar were concubines. They could be also be called wives, but they're more technically a concubine, so they don't have the full status of a full-fledged wife. Um, if you read First Chronicles one thirty-two, it calls Keturah there a concubine. So it makes sense. You can, she could be called a wife or a concubine. Uh, those kind of terms sometimes are uh, sometimes they call why uh, a concubine a wife because technically she is, but not. The status of a full-fledged wife. So, what we know for sure is that Keturah gave Abraham six more sons. Though far from being a, as numerous as the sands on the seashore, God is fulfilling the promise to Abraham, right? That he would be the father of multitudes. That's his name, Abraham. Most of these descendants, we don't know exactly what happens to them. Their, their names are listed in there, but we don't really know much about them. They're probably enveloped into the local people and then became the incense, the ancestors of the Arab people that we know today. But the Bible does talk about one son and his family, and that's the half-brother Midian. Midian is a name that becomes familiar as you read the Bible. If you continue past Genesis into Exodus, you read about Moses who kills an Egyptian. To avoid the, the vengeful Pharaoh, Moses flees to the land of the Midianites. It's there in this area, named after Midian, that Moses hears from God through the burning bush. Moses takes a wife from there named Zipporah. This half-brother of Isaac doesn't stray too far from the chosen son, does he? Yet their presence was usually not a good one. <laughs> Often we see the Midianites harassing the children of Isaac. Many of you know the story of Gideon in Judges 6. It is the Midianites who are the enemies of the story. These families were both the children of Abraham, and yet they had two divergent paths here. The line of the promise and the line that was not the promise um, were going in two different directions, and they often fought against each other. So you see that here in the story. So it's interesting. Um, God's promise to Abraham that he'd be the father of multitudes, that uh, he would, God would promise to take care of uh, Ishmael. We see him turning into a nation. And here he is with uh, Keturah having more sons. And uh, even though some of the Midianites are brought into, into the line of Isaac, um, most of the Midianites were at war with Israelites. So 
Very interesting. It is interesting how these people who are not in the line, in the promised line, who did not receive the promises of God, their descendants are really brought into that. Just kind of showing like, hey, all along the promises were meant for the nations. You know, you get hints of that. Like you have the promise to here to Isaac, but that yet Midian's children later on will be married into that line. And it's kind of like the children of, of Lot, you know, like the Moabites with Ruth. He did not receive the promises of God, but yet God brought that family, that, that, that line of Lot back in, or brought, brought him into the promise, not back into it, but brought him into the promise. Uh, so that one of his descendants was in the line of Christ. So it's uh, it's amazing to see what God has done in weaving all those people into that, and even those who looks like man they're lost, they're gone, they're they're out of it. They're not completely cut off. They might be outside, you know, on the fringes for a while, but then they're brought in, and uh, that's kind of the story of the Gentiles of all peoples, all nations. They were kind of on the outskirts for a while, but then God has brought all of them now in to the family of God, into the promises of God. So we'll come back next time. We'll take a look at verses 5 through 6, and we're going to talk about the free grace of God.